Hey everyone, welcome to Founders Live Conversations, where we tell unique and inspiring stories of entrepreneurship from all over the world. I am Nick Hughes. I am the founder and CEO of Founders Live. And, you know, today we have a special guest, Sahaj uh, from Funding X in India. And Sahaj is one of our primetime 2021 finalists that's going to pitch at our live fest event on December 1st. Sahaj, welcome to the conversation. Yeah, hi Nick, how are you? Good, good. Hey, I'm really excited to chat with you today. We're gonna capture your story, you know, how you and your co-founder have, you know, discovered a really interesting market, really excited to bring Funding X to, uh, to the market there in India, as well as, you know, your participation with Founders Live, what you've learned and all that. So, um, so excited to have you, man. How, how are things over in India right now? They are great right now. Like the virus is also decreasing. People are going to work. And I would really like to share my story, the story, how we started Funding X and everything, like from the start to finish and what we have future plans and everything. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's just, um, let's just jump right in. So tell us a little bit more about yourself as you, you know, really just, you know, when, as you grew up, you know, what attracted you to even, you know, becoming a founder and an entrepreneur? Sure. So actually this thing was, I'm right now currently in uh, fourth year in college right now. So I started working on these products initially, like in class 10th. So I used to see these innovative products around these sites like Indigo and Kickstarter and used to admire them. Like they were very creative products, very amazing products. So I thought, why not <coughs> Indians start working? Because even I had ideas. I used to create microscope, which can be like assembled in under $10, right? A microscope, which you can see in plants and everything. That in school, we used to have it for around uh, 50 to 70 $80, right? So from 10th, I started working on that. Then after, like, after I went to college, I got new friends. I got much level higher maturity. I got to know new friends. I got to learn about this entrepreneurship. Basically, I took courses. And what happened in India was also, there's a huge wave right now. If you see right now in India, number of startups are growing at a rapid pace, right? Right now, if you see, there was the, our first IPO, like first, uh, sorry, uh, unicorn in India was yeah. took around six years. Wow. Right? But right now, there's a startup uh, which took around six months to become a unicorn. Like from six years to six months. So now, if, right now, if you see on LinkedIn also, everyone is going on creating something new because in the pandemic, they got their time. They are putting in their time to work on this, right? So they are getting time. They are innovative. So there's actually a huge boom right now in startup, yeah. as I would say in India. Like there's yeah. definitely. Yeah. Wow. So that and is when we started working on this and thing. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And what... You know, uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about Founders Live in Bangalore in a second, but um, you know what what attracted you to you know s the startup community and tell us a little bit about what you know what is available there because obviously you you know you hear about these startups and they're becoming in you know in unicorns and you know kind of growing, becoming billion dollar plus companies. But, um, you know, it's one thing to have an idea, but it's another thing to actually start to understand how we're going to create something and get into the community. So what did you do to what were those kind of steps to figure out how you wanted to start that company and get into more of a community? And then you obviously discovered, you know, Founders Live. Yeah. So what starting in like in college, when you start a startup, the first issue is that you don't know how to do anything, right? Basic steps, because there's legal, there's registering a company. There's all the legal aspects, right? <coughs> sorry. Yeah. When you, <coughs> sorry. Yeah. So when you are actually in a, in college, right? You see these people like Paytm, big, big names, Zomato, these all, oh, these companies grow to a very high value and they are like, it's like, we want to become like them. But when you actually step into it, you see the difficulties, right? You see that this is the problem. This is the problem. You have customer acquisition issues. <coughs> you have issues with like convincing people your idea is not good you don't have a team you don't have interns right so there are many issues you start to face so what we started doing was we started connected with different people like i connected with umesh from bangalore 
right so he he told me that uh, like you could uh, like your startup looks amazing and you could be a part of this uh, f- this uh, founders life right so this was something from founders life i got connected to many five st- amazing startups in india only bangalore event yeah and then from bangalore we went into wild card event and then we went we also i connected with many startups on linkedin also right so i started work like working on linkedin getting connections connecting to people and hearing what they what the vision is and then understanding the startup and everything so mm-hmm. this is the journey that has been till now yeah well and you, you just figured out right that's you know one thing yeah. you know i think just one, of le- one of the lessons here is um you just take the initiative and you know re- like you're saying reach out on linkedin and other uh communities and platforms you know obviously you have founders live that you can participate and and get into the community and pitch which like let's go there so um you know congratulations on not only winning the founders live bangalore event the that was our first one in india so we launched in india and amazing that was awesome and then you have gone on to you won the founders live primetime wild card event and you know we wrapped in uh, a few so startups from different parts of the world which was great and you end up uh, winning that which was incredible and now you are in the prime time event that happens on December 1st and we're so excited but what i would like you to touch on a little bit is what and, and you know both you and your co-founder have pitched in the founders live events so that's great yeah. what did you learn from that and how would you, what what advice would you share with other founders around crafting the right pitch you know from slide deck to the message and it's a 99 second pitch so you got to be brief what advice do you have there yeah so the first advice is like be very short like as nick says 19 seconds right just be very short to the point no need to tell your business plan for like five year value five year growth and this all if you in this pitching competition you need to tell what is your idea the problem and what is your traction till now and the basic steps around what you have been doing what you have been getting so very small you need to con- condense the matter and tell the people only the important stuff so that this is kind of an elevator pitch that is what i would say right so we also prepared kind of an elevator pitch only because in 19 seconds you need to convince the people to vote for you to convince the investors who are looking at this founders live event and everything right so this is what i would say and what you need to do is you need to make your slides a bit presentable right and you need to practice 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 and practice right this is one thing because if you uh, like exceed the time limit your uh, your 5 uh, 10 seconds your pitch would be not that perfect right if you need to be perfect you have to practice that is the one thing i would say yeah practice practice and you know so that's what we would call preparation you know you need to be prepared and um you know a, a few thoughts on that I'll I'll add to what you just said which is you know um when you practice and i think this is unique to each person you need to understand how you personally operate some people literally like just read it like um memorize the thing right like you write out the entire minute 30 <laughs> pitch you know like you know you write it out and then you literally memorize it i wouldn't suggest that that would you know that just doesn't work for me um you know what what works for me and what a lot of what i suggest is really understand those like major points that you want mm. to really cover and then your slides support that so slides are much more visual and they support that pitch and then you the practice is really like getting that timing down feeling comfortable on you know the message and how you're de- how you're delivering it and then uh, you know another great thing is um you know kind of test it on you know friends family and even people that don't really know what you're doing because when you're able to you know uh you practice your pitch on you know a family member that doesn't really understand or even a friend that really doesn't know what you're doing and then you ask them for feedback you're getting someone that doesn't know a lot about your business so then say, oh i totally get what you're doing right yeah 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 i yeah. agree with that also the practice thing was not memorizing definitely but the, if you memorize then it would be like not a, it wouldn't even let you win right what you do is you need to actually know what you have to speak on the that slide right you need to know what is in every slide right 
you have to tell them you have to yeah. just write a bit right not everything on your slide you have to just write uh, cse this and then explain what is this what is this C cse to ltp ratio what is your problem only in one line or only in very less like ppts are something that should be yeah. very short like single lines single word right and then you explain that in your words so people have an listen to you and they see and they relate to what is on the uh, ppt nice love it yeah yeah i love it so let's let's shift a little bit to uh, you know um you know i want to dive into you know funding x and and really why crowdfunding so you mentioned it a little bit earlier but talk to us a little bit on what you see or even what you saw as that challenge and problem and especially in india um you know 1.3 billion people um there's a tremendous amount of you know it's like with that 1.3 billion, if you know, whatever that exact number is, and you know, we're still early in this process of, you know, mobile and, you know, internet technology connectivity, it's still happening across your continent. And then when you look at crowdfunding, talk to us about what you saw and, and the opportunity that you wanted to bring to the Indian market. Sure. So crowdfunding is something which is somewhat very new in India. That is what I would say firstly. And second thing is, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. So crowdfunding is something like democratizing investment, right? Like getting people to like work with you. For example, if you want to build any product, right? The thing is that you need to first, for example, in reward-based crowdfunding, right? What happens is that you need to first, uh, like if you don't have reward-based crowdfunding, the thing is that you need to first build your product a prototype then raise investment for that to mass manufacture it and everything and then sell it to people but what happens with this is you don't need to raise funds initially right what happens is that first you get the customers first that is what i mean is you get the required customers you get the traction you get validation for example if i made something right if i made a product a microscope under ten dollars and i list it on my website the thing is like would people buy or not right that is what i can check at crowdfunding validation very important because what happens with founders that they create the product but the thing is there's no market need right for the product so then it's total waste right even of the time money effort everything right so why not first test it with our website through crowdfunding and then go on to raise funds create everything and this is how your step should be that is what i would suggest and next thing with crowdfunding is equity based crowdfunding Right. In that, what happens is that <clears throat> that is actually a vision in future when in India there are rules and everything specified. Right. But with equity crowdfunding, like you and me, like common people, instead of VCs or yeah. HNIs, instead of them, we can invest in these startups. For example, uh, Amazon. Right. If someone wants to invest in Amazon in the very early stage, right, these companies. So that is what democratizing investment is so that is the thing that we want right now that customers are their investors that is the best thing about crowdfunding right right yeah and you know we've we've talked about this a little bit a little previously but i feel that um you know we're still like globally but especially in india it's still so early in in breaking open this whole new market this whole new as you mentioned you know really democratizing <laughs> investment and maybe another way to say that is just access to early stage capital for the initial growth and development of the project and the business. And that doesn't have to only come from traditional investors. And when you look at crowdfunding, you know, um, rewards based crowdfunding and the things that you're doing, um, there's ways to bring those initial customers along with you early as early as possible. And, you know, for instance, like you take something like Founders Live, you know, we have fans around the world and we've looked at this and, you know, we're still looking at how we would want to execute. Uh, there's many different ways too, uh, from what the concept of crowdfunding, you know, uh, that, that, that you can put together. But, you know, if you have, um, let's piece this together. You have, or you have a brand and, and maybe even some early products going and getting those initial customers or supporters that then essentially purchase. I mean, it's, it's, it's a similar to like a customer revenue 
what they're putting in in early uh, is essentially a, um, whether it's an it's not an equity investment, but it is uh, financial uh, capital up front to then support the growth and the development of the product. And you know, I think what I like about it is it's it's creating that community first and that like really that um, the support of the masses around the brand versus going and trying to talk to three or five investors to try to get money and, you know, trade equity. So it's just, a, it's different. It's a new way. It's a different way. It doesn't mean it's better or worse. It's just, it's another way to do it. Um, so let's go a little further on, um, you know, basically this is a combination question, but, you know, what do you see in the Indian market? And then, you know, let's even go further on, you know, kind of the vision. So it's like a two part question. But talk to us a little about the, the vision and then the growth of the massive growth that we're going to see in the Indian market, which really provides you in a tremendous opportunity for a sizable business. Yeah, so first of all, the growth in Indian startups is what would fuel our company, right? If the startups grow, our company would grow because our company would definitely help these start would help the startup companies to get the initial validation initial traction through our platform right so i'm very bullish about indian startups as of now right since the number of startups we are seeing in different sectors like there's a startup creating uh shoes out of plastic waste right someone creating an innovative vr lens and they want to check it out check it with the early early backers right get their feedback and everything so the people who are like still People who are actually interested, they are growing at a very fast pace. Like the number of people who are getting educated right now about annual investing, about looking at startups at a different, at a di like from a different perspective. Like and right now, many people are starting up. So this is something that this could benefit like many founders right now in India. And secondly, about the vision of the con uh, this company, I would say that uh, right now what we are doing is we are creating a reward based crowdfunding platform in near future right we would be creating an equity based crowdfunding and with that we can target any company right any company in india that wants to raise funds for its <coughs> operations for its customer acquisition growth for its everything right so for example these people for example the small startup which is providing a specific payment service so people who are using it can even invest in that like if they have one, they have some dollars, some rupees extra, right? They could in, like invest, for example, a stock market. They could invest a part of it. This could even fuel the startup's growth and as well as their growth. For example, if the investment, if the startup becomes a unicorn, you get like what hundred x, two hundred x, right? Easily. So it's helpful for both ends, right? And this becomes circular economy, and then you get a yep. yeah. This is good. This is good, and you know. We, we share a similar opinion and we share a similar vision that, you know, let's go back to what you said earlier, democratizing uh, access to capital and democratizing fundraising um, definitely in, involves equity crowdfunding or equity fundraise. And again, like I say, it's, it, you know, the traditional venture capital or angel uh, you know, market and investment that's still there and it's, it's an option. But when you look at these new these new options that are coming together, like it, it tremendously, tremendously huge opportunity, and you know it's not just you know in India, it's around the world. But um, speaking of that, you know, what do you imagine? Do you imagine only kind of focusing for the vision of the company, only focusing on the Indian market, or um, you know what? Let's go out five to ten years. Do you think Funding X actually has activity uh, in in other parts of the world? Definitely. Like our for, like our main goal is right now to be like is to establish ourselves in next two to three years in India, and then <clears throat> get this entire thing to different first Asian countries. Because if you would know that this these platforms right now are only in European and uh, US based companies, right? And if you see the scenario of startups, they are actually starting to grow from this Asian as com more as compared to any other region in the world right now. So that would be a major target like Sri Lanka, that is south to India, and then even like <clears throat> in Nepal and different different like neighbors in 
Asia and then move on to move on to uh, like USA or like US, America or or Europe. That would be our plan to expand globally. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Awesome. Good stuff. All right. A um, few more questions here and let's just dive into, you know, what you've learned thus far and, you know, you're still early in the process and that's always, that's great. That's great. But you've probably learned a few things. And so what would you, you know, you, let's just even go back like, two years, right? Let's go back to yourself two years ago, three years ago, you're just getting in college and university there and you start to really think about, you want to do something bigger. What would you, what advice would you give your earlier self? And maybe that's, you know, to founders that are thinking about creating a company now. First thing is just start it. Like, don't wait for anything. Like you would think like, let's wait for the good time. Let's wait for this. Let's wait for this and that. Just start, just start working on it. Right. If you take time, like this idea will work or this idea will work. Just start, just be on it. Just like test in the market, talk to people. If they would, if they would want this idea, but don't talk to you, to the people, you know, right. Talk to the people who are your target market. Like, for example, if you're creating something for example, for in the, uh, like payment sector for businesses, talk to SMEs, talk to these small businesses, what issues they are facing. And if they like the product, what you are going to make, go for it. And then what issue I, what, what next thing I would say is if you're building a brand, start building a community, very important around that. And second thing is focus on the SEO because for any company focusing on the SEO from start is very important important like if you want to spend on ads that is different if you have lots of money but initially founders don't right so if you if you have to be frugal you need to start working with the seo that is very important for any company yeah. and next thing is this uh community seo and just start with the idea and see what happens right you would get to learn in the process just talk to and network very important yeah network with different founders network with different people in your community network with different people with anyone, just yeah, anyone and see what they're building. You would get to know what is going on in the market and everything. So just network and just start. That is what I would say. Love it. Love it. And yeah, you, I mean, just start networking and connecting with others and then uh, creating that brand with a community around it. You think about those things right there. So huge and so important. And uh, weirdly enough, that's essentially the story of Founders Live. You know, like I, I personally just got started. We started, you know, creating an events and networking and just getting people together. And all of a sudden, a community grew and it started to grow around the world. So, you know, it's, it's possible. And, you know, it doesn't matter what, what type of business you have. You need to think in that realm of what is the brand? What is that experience? And how do you get more people around it? So that's so awesome. Um, all right. So fundingx.in, you can learn more information, find more information on FundingX there. And for everyone, um, you know, join us on December 1st, maybe December 2nd, depending on where you are in the world. But, it is, you know, December 1st, December 2nd, we have Live Fest 2021. We're so excited about it. And, um, you know, we we are so excited for you to be a finalist and pitch in the event. So, um, hey, thank you so much. And I'll give you the last word uh, to leave us with today. Sure. Thank you very much for that, Nick. Yeah, that's a, like actually being a part of Founders Life. Actually, it was very like a new experience for me. That right? for any founder, you get to, for example, I used to pitch for five minutes, but now the pitch time used to 19 seconds. So to get that pitch in the specific time, like getting it, getting it perfect. And next thing also connecting with people, like in the first Bangalore event, I got connected to so many people. I am still in touch with one or two of them. So I got connected with many people through this Founders Live event only. Yeah. So this is something that people should try, right? People should definitely try out these events and everything and connect with people on these events. Yeah. No, thank you. And definitely check out for like, like vote for us for on first december <laughs> thank yeah. you all right all right this has been uh founders live conversations i'm nick hughes um uh, ceo and founder of founders live and bringing great content hearing about inspiring stories of entrepreneurship 
from all over the world. Thank you all, and we will see you later.